were always if there was a disagreement or, or anything between mother and daddy i don't know how i can remember why but you were mother's champion and um so those are just sweet memories of have of your tenderness how, how old how old were you bruce when this dog died how old were you how old it was jack i have no idea it was what jack was that, what, was the, what was the question again how old were you when your dog died oh i think in yeah uh yakima i was probably 10 11 somewhere in there mm -hmm. yeah Probably, and I was. The Go ahead. The, the other memory I have about Yakima and that floor furnace that we had there with a, a there was a duct in the ceiling, so that there was a little bit of warm air that went upstairs. Not a yeah. lot. <laughs> it was freezing up there. Uh, Chad had this uh, party for his insurance people. Yeah. And they made a they made a salad with shrimp. I was Dan, Dan Trent. Yeah. And oh, there was a little bit left. I mean, we stood, we were up there on that upper grade watching the whole thing with our uh, mouths watering, hoping there would be something left. And uh, <laughs> that was my first taste of shrimp, and I've never tasted shrimp as good since. <laughs> that was so good. Well, one thing I remember is when you came back from your mission, you liked oysters raw oysters i i i couldn't believe that chris <laughs> chris chris yeah they're slimy little burgers aren't they <laughs> i've never had any but yeah. i've watched i've watched them being eaten by the people but i've not forgotten that you like them so where was Bruce when you came home from your mission? Where was where were we living at that time? Uh, Silver Spring, Silver Spring, Maryland. Oh, okay. Well, you you came by our house because um, because I remember you telling me that. So how much you got there? Loved them, and I think your mission. Where was your mission? It was down south, someplace. Texas. Texas. Was it right on the ocean? Oh, the whole state. Uh, we, we moved around from place to place. Mm. Well, you know, I don't have any memory of you, Bruce, until we lived in Las Vegas. Probably my first memories of you are the Black Ridge uh, era when, uh, you know, at, at Zion's Park and, and all of that. I'm sure I had you know that you were i must have seen you when we lived in silver spring and i was just a little kid but i have no memory of that yeah yeah yeah, it was, Black Ridge was pretty yes it was beautiful. yes it was a heartbreak too because daddy daddy another one of daddy's dreams uh was lost and lost in, in such a sad way um but anyway well, so there, I don't even know what you're referring to. What was, what was lost in a sad way? There, I'm, I'm a piece of our family history that I don't know exactly what happened. I know we don't, somewhere along the way, we didn't own it anymore, but I know nothing about uh, what happened there. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Daddy owned a large parcel of ground. Right. That included, uh, I don't, no, I mean Black Ridge is is a is a geological formation, I think, and I think we called or he called the area he owned, which I believe was across the highway from Black Ridge. I'm not sure, but anyway, it was a large parcel of land. He imagined that he would build there. Uh, I think some kind of a resort, perhaps, oh, or something like that. It was it was something he intended to build. And of course, we we had a reunion or two there. Yeah, and um, and it was a beautiful place. But as Daddy lost Bumbleberry, okay, he and he was pretty destitute. 
he lost Blackbridge as well. He couldn't keep the payments. Up. And I worked at First American Title at that time. And one of the lawyers was helping me help daddy to do a um a bankruptcy claim okay and i think after, even after we worked on it daddy declined that and didn't do it because that would have paid off debts it would have um it would have made their lives a little bit easier but i know that he felt even then responsible to his uh investors one of whom actually was Carmen's secretary when he was the chairman. And he wanted to not short shrift them. He wanted to be able to pay them off. Okay. So, so he imagined if he could make a million once, he could do it twice. And I think he worked so hard to do that, but of course was never quite able. Right. So that's what I know. Now, Chad and Cynthia, and perhaps Jay, I'm not sure, were very much involved in helping Daddy through that time, legally. So they would know so much more than I do. Well, I was, I'm pretty sure that was before Cynthia came along, though, unless things were dragging out longer than I thought. No, I think that was before she came along, but when they were doing the legal thing, um, the guys who had done really bad things to daddy uh, regarding Bumbleberry and made it so that he went bankrupt. I think by then they were married and, and, and maybe maybe it was Jay and Maureen, but I think it was him. I don't know which it was. Anyway, somebody knows way more than I do. And I think it would be, and I think it would be one of those couples. Okay. It's something I've been curious about. I mean, I was, you know, in my teenage years going all through there, but nothing was ever communicated to me as what was going on. Mm. Uh, when we moved from Los Altos Hills to Pleasanton, I all I knew is we were moving. Well, that was, I'm I, sure that that move was because they lost yeah. Los Altos Hills. Yeah, but I didn't, all I knew was we were moving. Okay, we're moving. Mm -hmm. And they never told me of any financial difficulties. That's the joy of childhood. Yeah. But, you know, but when I was a girl, I I did know that they were always in debt. That mother would often say, I don't know where the next meal is coming from. Um, and um, my prayers as a child always included, please help mother and daddy get out of debt. So... I didn't know the extent or, you know, particulars. I just knew that mother was often afraid to answer the phone because it would be a bill collector. We had the vacuum cleaner repossessed that daddy had gotten for her. Um, and in Yakima, we had certain things repossessed. I can't remember what. It was, I, and I've been afraid ever since then of spending money. Um, because because their hardships were so great and they were so young and they had so many children. Yeah. So that's the way it was. Well, I appreciate those, those insights. Bruce? And yeah. the Marcel, I mean, Marcel. hang on, Bruce. Bruce? Bruce is here, and so is Artie. They're at the same house? No, they're not at the same house, but come and sit here for a minute just <laughs> to enjoy these. Say hi. To enjoy them and these memories, and they haven't seen you for a long, long time. Come and see. Is this Chris? Who is it? This Who is it? Bruce and Artie. Were you in the garden? He's doing the watering. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. I need some glass. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. Whoever was talking. Bruce was saying something about Yakima. Okay, Bruce. Uh, 
what was repossessed must have been the Hudson that Dad bought the Yakima. The Hudson? I didn't know he bought that one. That, that might have been. Yeah, so I, I remember the beautiful Hudson when he took up with it. That's crazy. Yes, doesn't he have a beautiful voice? Um, it could have been. Of course, the other thing about Daddy is he lived on the edge all the time. Uh, I'm sure we all have memories of the gas tank being empty <laughs> and getting out and pushing it <laughs> on the way home. <laughs> on the way home to church um, in, in Yakima, Yakima Avenue and, and what was the name of that, that really posh street? Um, Oh gosh, I can't recall. Marcel knows these things so much. Anyway, we would um, get out and push it uphill. Wow. <laughs> because once we were going downhill, Daddy could put it in neutral, and somehow we would make it home. That's just, <laughs> and I think that's a metaphor <laughs> for for how Daddy lives, and and it's a metaphor for the great stress that mother was under all the time. So, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. She always wanted, she always wanted to Pardon? move us out in the country and have a cow and a few uh, animals. That's right. Always talking about that. Mother wanted a little cottage or something, a picket fence, a cow and a man who adored her and um and who would stay in one place <laughs> yeah stay in one place and i don't know if daddy adored her so i don't think he sufficiently did but when he was putting together those photo albums here at my house <laughs> after she died and, and he came to live here for about and a year, and he spent the, a whole summer with a box of photos that mother had collected and putting them in albums. And um, he sometimes would bring me a picture of mother. And on one occasion, he said, you don't appreciate what you have until you lose it. Yeah. And I think that's how, and I know that's how he felt after he married Vera, because Vera was, just absolutely not mother. Hi, Arby. Hi, Hi Bruce. Well, hello, Chris. Hi. Hey, are you hold it? I'll hold it for a minute. Hi. Hi who are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> we don't look well, the same anymore, do we? <laughs> no. The clock has moved on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, boys? Doing well. Great. Yay! Life, life is good. Good, good. Is this, is this Christine or what? I'm, I'm Christine. I'm anybody okay. you can be right now, Bruce. <laughs> we were like this, you and me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce and Artie. Yeah. Can you sing a duet? Can we what? Sing a duet. Sing a duet. No, I don't think that's. I I, I would. Can you can you please? I'm serious. Can you? I'm gonna go get the cat. Can you see? Can you sing? There is beauty all around when there's love at home. There is. Well, Chris has got it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Can you do that? Yeah. I, there is beauty all around when there's, there's love at home. There's beauty all around when there's love at home. There's beauty all around when there's love at home. Come on, sing, <laughs> Chad, Artie. Well, I was trying to, one of the, one of the challenges of singing in, in these scenarios is our voices actually are um, a, a little bit off from each other as far as the timing goes. There's just a, a it doesn't quite match up. Well, um, that's all for some. Oh, 
Okay, we're all for it. Here we go. There, there is beauty all around. When there's love same verse. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It's kind of like, row, 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 your boat, and we're all on a different, row, 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 what? Row, 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 Yes, we were singing Love at Home in a Round. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was fun. That was okay. great. Okay. I think we should, we should figure out how to do that on Zoom so we can all sing together. Well, Cheryl, my wife's family tried to sing Happy Birthday once on Zoom. And it was the most discordant singing of happy birthday ever because every not all the voices were together. It was just crazy. Wasn't that wasn't that right, Cheryl? On happy birthday. Yeah, Cheryl just walked in the room. Happy birthday and Zoom just did not work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it was an experience that you paired together, and that's what counts. Yes. You'll never forget. Well, yeah. You're right. And that's why it makes me chuckle to try to sing the, the um we're just a little bit off, but that's okay. And Cheryl just got back from picking blackberries. My hands Good for her, and I bet her fingers are black. And her she was black. just holding her fingers up and showing me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want day. Chris to realize. Love you, Bruce. Love you, Laura. Hi. 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 Cheryl, leave me. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 See my fingers because it's so Blackberry fingers. Turn, turn so, I like can see my fingers. Those I want blackberries in the park. Those blackberries in the park are so pokey. Oh my goodness. Oh yes, blackberries are terrible. And there's my youngest daughter, Amber. Hi. Yes. Hi, Amber. Hello, Amber. Hi, Amber. She was helping I'm... us. And those blackberries on the inside are so, so tantalizing because you can't get to them. <laughs> we and... had blackberry bushes for a while. We still do because they're immortal, but not because we lost them. <laughs> I want Chris to realize I'm talking to a brother who was number four in our family. I know their numbers. And, 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 their and I don't know what number you are. Are you 11 yeah. or are you 10? Well, Chris says she knows my number. What's my number, Chris? Your number is. <laughs> Chris. You're, 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 wait, I've got it. You're 11. Yeah, that's right. Bruce is three. Four. Four. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the eleventh child, the sixth boy, the eleventh child. There you go. And Bruce is the Ooh, sec right. second <laughs> second boy <laughs> because there's Camille Mars, Shield, oh, oh, Terry, oh, yes. and Bruce. Yes, yes, yes. And Bruce, a, a, a fond memory I have of you is mother used to swing you in her arms and kind of dance with you when we lived on Butterfield and call you Fatty Arbuckle. <laughs> Bruce Rose Foley. Yes, Bruce Rose Foley. <laughs> I can't imagine that. <laughs> Isn't this? <laughs> I don't have anybody to tell me any memory like that of me and mother. Aww. Except that I was body trained at six months. That'll tell you a lot about me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, sure. well, it's good to know. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well part of the good to know is mother wanted perfect children and i was her first experiment <laughs> so potty <laughs> friends, i th i think i i don't know Artie, you're still pretty great i think it might have worked <laughs> when were you potty trained Artie? <laughs> i have no idea i think i'm potty trained but i'm not sure how old i was <laughs> Apparently, your mother gave up on the perfection. <laughs> no, yeah. I, think, I think you're quite a perfect man. Oh, well, thank Love you. Love you guys. I'm going to go make 
dinner. I have well, a onion. It is it is delightful to see your face, Chris. So Bye. good to see you. So good to see you. Come yes. Call me sometime. <laughs> we'll put you in on Zoom and you okay. <laughs> Anyway. Well, in fact, it, it has been so this happy, happy accident. Yeah. I don't, I don't know who called who or how it happened. No. So, I was looking on my I was looking on settings. I was <laughs> and there was Hardy sitting up in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> how did that happen? Well, so, I'm so glad it did happen. Yeah, somehow it happened. I, I actually have, I, I turned on Zoom and hit record, and I have my laptop leaning against, my phone leaning against my laptop. I'll see if this worked at all. Bruce, to, are you still there? To record. Bruce? It, there I go. I there, somehow lost it. There okay. you are. All okay. right. So you hit record. Uh, you think you have us? I I was going to show you Connie and Isabella's garden. Connie what? Connie and Isabella's garden. Yes. So I'm traveling to outside. Oh. So I have this recording on Zoom, but I don't know if it's if it's how effective. When I get done, I'll play it back and see. But it won't show either of you. It, it's just the, the audio of you and a picture of me because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> because because oh. you're such a handsome fellow. Bruce, I'm loving your landscape. But, uh, I'm loving you, your landscape as you go outside. But now your, your, your screen's gone all fuzzy for me, Bruce. Um, can In you... fact, it's white. Yeah. I lost the screen here too. I, I don't know what happened. It looks like the uh, marine layer from California. <laughs> I had replacement knee surgery. Yes. Six, six weeks ago. How, how are you um, doing? Really doing well. Can you see out there? I can. Yes. Yes. That's lovely. It I've been beautiful. I've been watching the videos of our property in Missouri from 2005, and it was such. It's such a beautiful part of the country, the Ozarks there. Ozarks. And the other yeah. thing about them, when we were there, yeah. when I was there for the reunion, I really felt being an English major and having read so many things, uh, American literature, I remember saying, this feels like home. Um, and, it, and it did. Um, it was beautiful. It is beautiful. I, I'm... I'm glad that we live where I live. It's a beautiful place here in Brigham City, but I miss, I, I wish somehow I could incorporate Brigham City with the Ozarks somehow. Because I I mean, you're not in the Ozarks, are you, Bruce? Yeah. You call it? The yeah, the foothills, of, the foothills of the Ozarks. Hmm. And then, um, and, and then those people just, who drive in carriages. What, what, the Amish? They were Mennonite. <laughs> Oh, they're, they're the Mennonites. There's all, all different brands of Austin and Mennonites, so we do a lot of uh, dealings with them. Do you? Uh, Mennonite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, we buy feed from them, and uh, they uh, have lumber mills. We buy lumber from them, and we had a couple of girls uh, clean our house for a long time until one of them had a baby, and then they couldn't get more. But yeah, they're they're wonderful people. Yes, I would think so. I would think gentle and, and uh, quiet. There was Mennonite, Mennonites in Guatemala when we were down there, hmm. and uh, they, they call them Mennonitas. So oh, I still call them Mennonites. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I just well, I think you are in a wonderful spot, except for your tornadoes. I wouldn't want to be looking well, out. We, we don't. You have to sign up for tornadoes, and we don't. We don't pay that annual fee. <laughs> up, so. uh, well, I wish we had to sign up for earthquakes. <laughs> uh, yeah, only for people to sign up for. I'll oh. show you our daughter. 
Bella, except she's very shy and she. Oh, I'd love to. See, I'd love to see her, and that's a beautiful name, it's Bella. Well, we'll see if we get her to kill her face there. Isabella. How how old is she, Bruce? Uh, fourteen. Okay. Hey, Bella. And you, like and you adopted her when she was how old? Uh, she was a uh, baby infant. Uh, okay. We we have gone through the whole adoption process and signed up for a baby in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. After the adoption process it took several a year or more, and that was very detailed. Mm -hmm. But uh, we I was on the fourth of July. We were having a party a party here at our house. And I said, Connie, she was born. Hmm. Well, that and must you, have been you knew that. that. That must have been the year after we left then, because we've been here for 15 years. Okay, where's she? No, I okay, there. Is she there? She comes and goes. Hello. Hey, Hello there. Hello, Isabella. This is your That's my sister. I am your aunt. Uh, I'm your aunt Camelia. <laughs> Hi. I'm your dad's oldest sister, unfortunately. <laughs> and I'm, your, I'm, I'm your dad's I'm, youngest brother. <laughs> so I'm so uh, she plays the piano. She plays the piano, the violin, sings beautifully. Oh, shows yes. her own dresses on that's wonderful. Uh, those that, those goats, rides horses. Oh my goodness. And Thing. You're fulfilling all my dreams, Bella. That's so nice. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget to be in horses in company. I loved horses. Still do. I'm afraid of them. So, but I love them. so in love with the boys that had horses. And Marcel was too. She was, she yeah. was, she was my competition. But <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, one time I took a ride on one of those horses behind somebody and I was scared to death. <laughs> well, I think I the one it, it was I feel like I was gonna be able to yeah. I know. Leonard, hey, do you remember Leonard. what? Do you remember when Leslie drowned? It was that his name, the boy Leslie. across the street drowned in the pond. Leslie, Leslie Baker. He 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 drowned Leslie in the Baker. in the gravel pit. It must have been hundreds of feet deep, and that Did was. You remember? We, were you there, or were you sitting on the porch when somebody came? At you? I was sitting on the porch when somebody told me. Where were you? You. You remember how I, I was there? Do you remember how I reacted or responded? No. How did you? I think that was pretty traumatic. That I was probably six or seven. And. Do you remember how you reacted? Uh, I think it was, I don't. I've been trying to remember. Uh, so you were you, you know, were at the had, place where he drowned, or you? Emotional, uh, traumas, mm -hmm. and they're stored in the body. Then they create disease and disharmony in the body. So mm -hmm. I've been trying to think through all things that could have been huh. uh, well, really traumatic. That really was very traumatic. He. Um, uh, Artie, he he was our neighbor boy across the street. He was about how old? He was about twelve, maybe. Sixteen. You think he was? He that was sixteen. Old? Was he that old? Well, that's what I. Um, I think he was pretty close to my age, and I was about twelve. Uh, he okay. might have been. He might have been a little older than I was, but not much. His father used I to. Was, uh, his father used to spank him or beat him with a, uh, a, a razor strap. And he was a harsh father. Hmm. And when Leslie died, his father's grief was just enormous. He walked around the backyard, his backyard, crying. And um, I think, well, I, I, know, I know that in those days it wasn't unusual to be beat with a razor strap. Even even Carmen's father beat him with a razor strap from time to time. But um, he was a harsh father.
that his heart was broken when he lost his son. Yeah. And for, for me and for you, I'm assuming, it was my first real awareness of death and how yeah. sudden they went off to to gravel pit to swim and came home as Leslie drowned. And it was it was it was a real shock. And I think when you have a shock to the brain or to the heart, it is to your whole body. No question. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the people on the other side of the the uh, German couple that made their own uh, beer? Yes. <laughs> I don't remember them. Yeah, I just remember. Beer bottles would explode. Did you hear these explosions from time to time when their bottles would explode? Yes. <laughs> really. He, in fact, I have a memory of he would store them down in the basement, and the basement was yeah. uh, like ours. You know, you have to lift. We had to lift the the door and go down. Anyway, there was there were these explosions, and he was rushing down and bringing up bottles. Um, <laughs> I didn't know they were. I didn't know they were German, but it was very comical to us. Of course, it was so they exploded because they yeah. he let them ferment for too long or something or. I don't know. I, I really don't know how to make the beer. <laughs> the, uh, the beer was stronger than the bottle. It was what? But the beer was stronger than the bottle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> indeed. <laughs> if you don't have the if you don't have the right bottle, it can't it can't uh, contain that much pressure and it explodes or pops the lid off if you don't depending on what kind of lid you have. But I remember they really loved garden. And um, and um, what's that? Uh, chopped up uh, cabbage and oh. sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. What sauerkraut has... and garlic and all that kind of stuff. Well, not in beer. <laughs> are, are you ta- are you talking about how to make sauerkraut? No, but I just remember that that was one of the things I remember about them was their oh, the garlic and sauerkraut. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that was a really interesting place to live, wasn't it? <laughs> there was that. Yeah. The I, remember, big I, remember, big... I remember laying out of the vacant lot there, which is between our house and our house. Yeah. And uh, all certain times of the year, when it wasn't too cold or too hot, just laying out on the ground, eating the grass, and watching the clouds go by, <laughs> feeling the breeze. It was really nice. Well, yeah, we just did that in the cemetery today. We laid flat on our backs and and itched and, and I itched. Ate, because... <laughs> I remember taking a bite of an apple there and losing tooth. <laughs> did you ever take a bite in the apple and find half a worm? <laughs> no, That's, I, I've heard that joke. What's worse than finding a worm in an apple is finding half a worm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, you know that big horse that you rode and you were yeah, probably probably that was the one. Yeah. Leonard Arquette. So he was an Indian. An Indian boy. And his last yeah. name was a French name, which goes back obviously to the French trappers. In any case, he used to bring his horses. He brought this great, big, huge black horse. You would know, and certainly uh, Alden would know, what kind of horse. It was huge and beautiful. And then he had what he called a quarter horse, which which was a a reddish, beautiful color. Anyway, I wanted to ride on Chief, the big black horse. I don't know what ever just made me decide that because I was terrified of horses, but I loved them so much. And he said, don't press your heels into the side because that's the signal to go. Well, of course, that's how I hung on to the horse. (laughs) With my heels in the side. And that horse took off down the driveway. And mother and daddy were on the front lawn. And he says how I remember it. And mother yelled, Berkeley, stop, stop that girl. (laughs) Of course, (laughs) The horse took off and made a right turn. And you might remember there was an empty lot at the end of the street on the left side, but in it was rolls of 
of uh, what kind of fence was it with a little barbed wire fence and i thought oh my gosh anyway somehow we managed to escape that one but then at the end of the street there was a right turn and he took that right turn and i kept saying whoa whoa stop stop but i was pressing my heels in the whole time so yeah. wow. he made a right whoa, turn whoa, whoa. <laughs> He made a right turn galloping, really. I'm amazed I stayed on. I don't think there was a saddle, but in any case, I did stay on. And he and he was coming to the big irrigation ditch. And I thought I just didn't know what was going to happen. But the next thing I knew, I was lying flat on the ground, looking up at this horse's big face. <laughs> As he was munching on the grass, he was a perfectly happy horse. <laughs> that sounds like a thoroughbred. A thoroughbred? What does that mean? Yes. In this in this case. Well, that's a type of horse. That's what they used to use in the races. So really high bred. Hmm. Thoroughbreds. Well, yeah. I, I can't picture this horse racing. He was he was huge. He was he was large. Uh, of course, I was yes. a little girl, so maybe he wasn't as big as I thought he was. But and, and he was all black. Anyway, mother well, really enjoyed Leonard because she loved horses. Um, one time we were visiting some people who belonged to the church, and I remember that she had. Um, a problem with her gallbladder isn't that a silly thing to remember but anyway she had a horse and they wanted daddy to ride it <laughs> daddy was not a horseman but he got on it and he went bumping away <laughs> he was just there were there was a foot of air between his bottom and the horse the whole time and, <laughs> and then, he, then he came back i don't know if he ever got on another horse or he ever was on another horse but anyway that's my experience of daddy on a horse. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, uh, is that the people we used to go visit? Uh, the boys were playing with matches up in the barn and set the hay on the barn, burned the barn down. <laughs> I don't remember that, but I'm not surprised. Their name was Winnebagers or Winnebagers. Uh, uh, Austin Bagers. Well, there were. I can't remember. Oh gosh, what was the name of those people from Missouri? They were mm, Leslie. No, there there was a boy. Do, do you remember the boy who had an eyelid that came down over his eye? <laughs> anyway, and and she had absolutely no editing going on in her brain. She said what? No filter. <laughs> no, no filter. And. We, and the, the the church was trying to earn money to build another church because we were moving above the Jersey Penny store. Anyway, so there was this um, hamburger stand at, at the um, at the fair, and the Mormons were known for the best coffee <laughs> uh, <laughs> in on the fairgrounds. Anyway, it, they made the best best hamburgers, and Daddy was bishop. And this lady wrote a song that she wanted to sing over the loudspeaker uh, to the people in the fair. And I don't know what it was about. I just know Daddy tried in every diplomatic way to get her not to sing. But she sang anyway. <laughs> and I don't remember what she sang. And I, it wasn't pretty. I just remember she had no a, a, a temper. Their names were Kempers. Do you remember the Kempers? That's who I was thinking of. That's who you were yeah, thinking of? Shepherd. Okay. Yeah. That boy with the low eyelid was in love with me. <laughs> 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 and I and and I didn't care for him at all. But his father came with a team of horses to plow the garden so that mother could plant. While that was going on. Betty Kemper tied me to a tree oh my gosh. so that he could kiss me. <laughs> he did what now? He tied, <laughs> he tied me to a tree. And I remember, 
<laughs> and you were how old? I was probably 11. Okay. That was my first experience with them. Um, um, how old was he? Oh, he was probably 13 or 14. I think it was so, against the law too, but <laughs> nobody came to my aid at all. I don't know if he got to kiss me or not. I don't know how I got out of that street. I just remember that happened. Wow. <laughs> that wasn't euphoria or out of body experience, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there was no bliss there, I promise you. <laughs> No. Well, they're the ones that burned the barn. They're, that's where the <clears throat> somebody, I don't know if it was him or a younger children were playing with matches, set the hay on fire, and they, they burned the barn down. Oh, how sad. <clears throat> Those people were truly straight from the Ozarks, and they were not in the Ozarks that you're in. They, um, the father lived in a little house behind their house that was on a farm. He wore striped bib overalls, and the mother made everything anybody wore. Um, she was certain that my stomach problems was because I needed an enema, and we were at their house for dinner, and so she insisted that she give me an enema. <laughs> she says every problem started in the intestines, which is true. <laughs> but anyway, I was... I was too young to, I don't know, to make a fuss or something. It's just not a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think so. Anyway, sister and brother Kemper, uh, they, and they told them they so. drove to find a truck that you had to use the crank to get it to go. Um, I, I, rem I remember that in our lives, but I can't remember when that would have been. But anyway, oh, well, I'm just filling you all full of my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very interesting. I think we're sharing both ways here. I hope so. I, 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 so. I remember that uh, uh, sled that Grandpa Chandler gave to us, that uh, flyer called uh, Silver Flyer or something like that. that remember that black sled? It was so pretty. <laughs> and uh, he gave, it, gave us his bicycle. Grandpa did? Uh, Grandpa would ride his bicycle to work every day. Yes, road. yes. And at some point, he gave us his bicycle and uh, that uh, the flyer, 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 or Eddie Flyer or something. Where, where did we uh, live? Huh? Where did we live? Where did he we live? He gave it to us on top. I'm pretty sure huh. that we still had it in Yakima, and I remember in Yakima going to the hills behind the, to yes. the orchard, yes. behind the house to the orchard, sled uh -huh. ride, sleigh ride, 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 ride hill, yes. and we were totally frozen. <laughs> yes. That was quite, uh, And then there's a, a hill at the, uh, uh, the Scripture High, I think, there in Yakima. You go sleigh riding, you had terraces to it so you'd get going down the hill and you'd hit a terrace start flying <laughs> up in the air and that was uh, pretty outrageous but <clears throat> well i remember walking through that orchard at night i'd have to for some reason i'd be on an errand at night alone by myself in the dark walking through that orchard going really? uh, through the orchard to the road which took you up to the highway Mm -hmm. And the pheasants would fly up in your face and scare me <laughs> half to death. When, when the pheasants would fly up and flutter and make all that racket they make. Yeah. But uh, well, I made it. I had heard it. <laughs> you survived. <laughs> I did. You know, a Chopinish? I yes. had a cyst on my tooth. On your way? I, I had walked to town to the dentist alone. Have yeah. the dentist work on my tooth and come home alone. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. such a different life than people live now. Where, yeah. you know, I just uh, no no parent, no parental accompaniment or anybody else. I just I had to walk there myself. At least that's what I remember. It's true, Bruce. You did. Have that, that taken care of. 
I see uh, the, funniest thing, the funniest thing at all in competition was when Jay, uh, Terry fell out of the willow tree and caught his chin on the clothesline. Oh. And it's funny, Brown and he fell down. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you know, I, 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 I couldn't feel sorry for him because I thought it was poetic justice. <laughs> <laughs> because he picked on you. <laughs> oh, he tormented me forever. <laughs> wait, and so he would, he would do things and get a fight started. Wait, so who was it? Was it both of us? Was this Jay or Terry? Who are we talking about? Terry, Terry, Terry. Okay. One time she tied back to back the chairs. We, we sat back to back. And she tied there in the chairs until whatever I don't know until the cows came home or something. <laughs> I'm thinking all the time. You know, he starts it. He gets a fight going, and then we get punished. <laughs> <laughs> How funny! Well, I I don't know if you remember in Yakima he was pruning the pear tree in the front yard. And he cut off the limb that he was sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> and and he broke his arm. <laughs> oh. oh, that's how he broke his arm. I believe oh, that's boy, how he that used happened. that arm. He, he played that broken arm to the hill. Dad had us go out selling dad had us going out selling pumps to ketchup pumps for people to put in their bottle to pump the ketchup out. And oh, Terry sold never... more than him. Because he had that broken arm, he felt sorry for him. I I I remember sewing hot pads. <laughs> he he, uh, Artie, you came in at the best time of their lives. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, he told me how. Uh, he gave me the pitch of how to do it. I was to knock on the door and throw the hot pad. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've, I've never, uh, been, has, never been a salesman. always had a strong company. He did. He always had a strong company. <laughs> and Marcel had appendicitis there. And, uh, yes, she did. A burst appendix. Yeah. And, mother and I remember the first, the first, the first Mar Mars bar I ever ate. I remember really? walking up the hill toward the house eating a Mars bar. And I thought that was so good. <laughs> well, I lived on Mars bars while I was expecting Melody. <laughs> Those and big hunks. But I think, Bruce, because I have very low energy on my phone, that we should write energy. We should write these things down. So I really believe. No, we, yeah. Because, Artie, you're hearing things you've never heard before. Absolutely. Yeah. And mother and daddy, mother and daddy had at least three sets of children. Yeah. And different times of their lives. Bruce and I remember that they're really, I mean, when we lived in Yakima, our parents were in their thirties. Right. And they were young and poor and daddy was using all of his creativity that he could to make a living. Um, Mother was worried about answering the phone for fear it was a bill collector. And I was praying they would get out of debt. And Bruce was eating a Mars bar. <laughs> <laughs> and shrimp. shrimp I and had. shrimp. And shrimp. <laughs> I was so glad there was shrimp left over to that party that they had to tell people. He was selling insurance. Yes. Uh, the, the one for the church, whatever it's called. Uh, it was called Beneficial Life. Uh, Beneficial. And mom and mom and Marcel had polio, so our yes. house was quarantined for a couple of weeks. We were quarantined too, yes. That, That's was, true. Uh, that was the beginning of pandemics and quarantine. Yes. Although I don't, you know, I, I wonder about the Spanish flu. Did they ever quarantine people with that? I don't know. But certainly with polio. In any case, I'm afraid I'm going to lose you and just be gone. Well, and okay. Well, it's good to have. Love you too. Good to have Christine laughing in the background. That's nice to have that. <laughs> uh, it's so well, wonderful to have her this here. This has been a wonderful serendipitous call. Did, did you really do that? 
<laughs> Chris is serendipitous. She talks to herself a lot, which makes for a whole house full of people. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's just a change from my normal life, where there's just me and I don't even talk to myself. So <laughs> anyway. remember, remember that record player we had in top of the upstairs. I like, love off that. The pipes, off the yes. Ramus, uh, off the big, thick quarter inch. Uh, yes. Uh, they're very easy to break and <laughs> had to wind up that point at the top. I and love that. Still, still like that. That was really fun. I did love yeah, that. that. I loved, that was a fun. I, I loved the, the song that um, these records were all from the like 1920s or teens. And there was one of a chorus singing, We Shall Meet on That Beautiful Shore. And I loved that melody, and I kept winding it up and winding it up. And Daddy was outside the, my bedroom window, and he yelled up finally and said, If you play that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. And I used, to to, I used to go to sleep on the couch every night. Yes. <laughs> I was estimated, Bruce, wake up and go to bed. Bruce, wake up and go to bed. <laughs> Well, I remember it was our job to wake you up and make you go to the bathroom, and we had to get you down. We had to get you down those steep stairs, make you go to the bathroom, then get you back up those steep stairs and into bed. So you probably don't remember. That. You're probably still tired. You got no sleep. Yeah, I still fall asleep. With family, you know, I love to start a thing with family that you know, sounds around people talking. And, mm -hmm. I mean, that was that was so special to me. I was in such a good sleep. You guys yes. would be laughing and you know, <laughs> doing your stuff. And I'd be speaking, and it was so good. But I you hope asked you. me to wake me up <laughs> and go to bed. I hope you've forgiven me, and I hope you have therapy. <laughs> uh, well, I love you both. Well, mom, mom, mom used to say, and I still go to bed early. I mean, I, I pretty well sleep for the sun. And mom would say, as soon as the sun would go down, Bruce would go to school. I'd find him in a closet, under a bed, or behind <laughs> the couch. Where he would be asleep. <laughs> well, that was our, the lives we lived. I remember in Yakima, one of my little siblings curled up on that front cement sound asleep and i think we must have looked like trailer park people but <laughs> you know inside we had books and we had good music and we had the tabernacle choir and that lifted us out of out of being trailer park people anyway i love you both <laughs> this has been so this has been so fun a happy happy accident i think yep for sure okay okay Oh, Bruce, let's, see, let's see you on Zoom after this, okay? Or, well, or just call me. Or just call us. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Love you. Is that fun? Yeah. So that was me and Bruce and Camelia and Camelia's daughter, Chris, Christine. And. Uh, we'll see if this recording works out. Today is Sunday, August 8th, 2021.